Well, hi there, and welcome to Home Wizards, where we love to improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And you've been doing a lot of grilling, haven't you? Boy, I gr- I got to grill at least uh, three times a week, I would say. I do hamburgers, I do chicken, I do fish, I do steaks, I do vegetables a lot. I do salmon. I do peanut butter on the grill. You <laughs> do not. <laughs> but I, oh, growing up, I used to love, have you ever had a hot peanut butter sandwich? I on have toast. Not, I have not, no. What do you do? This has nothing to do with grills, but just a quick aside that basically you you toast bread or yeah. you could put it in the broiler with the peanut butter on top and it's crispy and melted. It's actually kind of neat. That it's sounds yummy. amazing. Anyway. Have you ever had cinnamon toast? Totally. Oh, I love it. Anyway, <laughs> let's anyway. talk about it. Hey, I know wait, we digress. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we're getting hungry. But, you know, let's talk about things because June is fire prevention and home safety month. I mean, every, every month has a, you know, a qualifier. And so I thought that since we're thinking about safety, uh, and there's so many things that can go wrong in the summertime when you're dealing with fire, right? You and your arms, you were saying that your, the hair on your arms will yeah, catch on you fire. Yeah, you being a, a, a gentleman that has hair on his arms, I have often, See, I would like, say... Show me your two arms. You have one yeah. that's hairy and one, one that's yeah. kind of not. Yeah, the right hand, <laughs> I am right-handed. It has basically no hair from all the, the fringe, you know. It, well, here's, here's when you know. For example, I'll be cooking the the eggs on the on the stove at breakfast, and then I'll move the pan to another element. And then, as I'm doing that, the heat will rise up and singe the hair on my arm, and Not then good. you smell that burning hair. So let's talk about safety with the gas grill, because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, as you're grilling outside, maybe you forget to make sure it's a safe distance away from the house, or, or that there isn't like a tree that's right over you know the grill that's going to catch on fire. Mm-hmm. Kind of check out where you well, are. Well, yeah, and also, you know, and I think June is probably this this fire safety month because it can be so dry right mm-hmm. about now, you know, mm-hmm. and I think, uh, you know, we have some huge water or wildfires going right now as we speak all across the country, so you do want to be particularly careful when it comes to outdoor grilling, especially like, like Cindy was saying, if, you're, if you have, you know, overgrown brush over your grill, for example, or you're very close to an overhang, you know, because... You know, grease fires occur when you're cooking steak. Obviously, you get flames shooting up into the air, so you definitely want to be careful. Also, even with clothing, you know, if you've got some nice loose, you know, frilly number on while you're cooking your steak, you want to be careful not to... We're not wearing a frilly number when we're grilling. (laughs) Speak for yourself, my friend. Okay. Sitting there with your... Hey, have you ever... (laughs) You have not seen me in my grilling poncho, have you? No, I haven't. Because those tassels can easily catch a fire. Okay. (laughs) Sounds like a cute little number, though, for sure. Uh, And you never want to light the gas grill with the lid closed. I don't know how you could, if you wanted to. I could. I'll tell you how. How would you? Turn the gas on and hit the the starter. Oh. And boom, I've I've actually done it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, why? Who are you competing against here? The neighbor. (laughs) I knew it. (laughs) Do you ever keep a spray bottle filled with water handy? And maybe even have a fire extinguisher handy. It's a good idea. Outside. I I have a hot tub next to my grill. so if Not close enough. Doesn't count. No, it is. It's right there. It's very close. Don't you think it'd be better to have a spray bottle, too? Much better. I mean, I know you have the the, the, the beer bottle with the, you know, the I have hose. The, the beer hat. The beer hat. With the, <laughs> but maybe have that as your fire extinguisher. No, that's fire a good idea. Fire extinguisher hat. Yeah, that's a good That'd idea. That'd be cute. It really would. Do you have fire... You no, know, how many fire extinguishers... I, I actually do not have a fire extinguisher. You don't have a single one in your not house? One. No. I'm getting one. We have five. That's a little, uh, it's a little, little over the top. So you're a little much, I'm a little under. So I'd be happy to share a couple. I'll take so, two. But we don't have one outside, and I think that's going to be my to-do this weekend. and We're going to put it outside by the grill, but we do have one in the kitchen. We have one halfway between both ends, and it's because of earth, earthquakes and, and fires and so forth. It's good to have one in opposite ends of the house, halfway in between, and then by your cooking source, you know, because the kitchen fires. Okay, is, I'm getting them. You don't have them. No, i, I got to get them. You're right. It's a good. It's a good it's gift. It's a great thing. All right. Well, anyway, so because fires can happen anytime, and you know, prevention is the key. Just you know, be thinking of this kind of stuff in terms of your propane. Well, you aren't using propane now. You are. You're like us. We have the natural gas. Line. Right. Yeah. Right into the grill. But natural what if gas. you were? What if you were using the propane and there was a leak? What would you say are some signs of? Of some leakage. You can, well, you the can soap smell thing. it. Yeah, the, the bubble thing, the, the soap? The bubble thing, you can smell it. How do you do uh, the bubble thing? You just put a little soapy water 
on the hose and then you can and this is from plumbing for years that when I would you know do kitchen remodels and stuff you put a little soapy water on the gas lines when you're hooking them up and, and it looks can, like a snail is going yep yep you see the little <laughs> it's not the directive and, and you know hey we didn't do it right let's do it again but is that for natural the natural gas line as well yeah as well as the propane sure, you either can, way you can sense it with both yeah but then, you know, generally you smell the stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm like a canary that way. I can smell that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> I bet you. Yeah. No, I know. I know you can. You do have a good sense of smell. No, I really. It's 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 weird how sometimes people you can. It smells just like those rotten eggs. You know, it's a scary smell. And you know, I, it's amazing because natural gas does not have a smell. I know. And they it's, put it's, that they, in. It's, a, it's they put it in. Why why couldn't they have picked like a patchouli smell or something luscious? Chipotle. Or Chipotle, anything. Any of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or salsa. So, yeah, some talta smell. <laughs> anything but Fire the smell. pits. How about fire pits? And I know that you've been coveting a fire pit. We would like to have a fire pit. It's still the big, you know, got to have one in the in the yard thing. But before you do, you got to figure out the safety issues, Again, right? again, uh, I think I've told the story, but I will tell you again. When we first bought the house, we have a oh, fire right. pit. I put the the pine cones into the fire pit and I lit them on fire and they shot up in the air 15 like a feet missile. of flames. Crazy flames. Scary. You're lucky it didn't cause a fire. I could have set the whole neighborhood on fire. So you you definitely have to be careful what you're burning and where and you know we've got these big beautiful pine trees above this fire pit. We didn't put it there. It was designed that way years ago but mm -hmm. seriously it's about the worst place you could have a fire pit. But we still do it because we're we're thrill seekers. But we do have a we always have a garden hose right there handy with a sprayer. But now you're going to have fire extinguisher, a fire extinguisher and a, and a fire <laughs> and a mister and a fire poncho. Okay, uh, you want to keep what I guess the ten feet rule is pretty good. Ten feet away from your house is is the closest a fire source, a fireplace should be. Okay, great. Yeah, I like it. You like it? Okay. You mean a fire pit is ten feet away? Yeah, a yeah. fire pit or fireplace ten feet away from, yeah. from the house, from any the main kind of, house, any yeah. kind of flammable, you know, source like that. Um, and I guess it's important to have it on a solid surface too, which makes sense. I mean, I guess you wouldn't want to have um, the unit itself on grass. Hmm. You instead have so, like, if some of the embers are, are floating, you want it to be, you know, extinguished by sure. it's, it's on flagstone or something like that. Right. Yeah, that's, I, I would assume that's what it is because, yeah, there's a brick brush down there that could catch yeah, on fire easily. Right. So yeah. don't just put your fire pit on top of grass or, you know, in, on the garden itself. Have right. some kind of a... Some kind of a Like barrier. a floor. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 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 And then don't leave it unattended. Yeah. Well, I do. I mean, I don't leave my fire pit on ten. My grill, I do though. I walk I in, know, I get, and I, I know. you're never supposed to leave that either. I know. I I think I'm, I'm doing everything it. wrong today. Here. I've, I've, well, no, you're not. I, but I've done that in the kitchen. I've walked down the hall for a second, and boy, yeah, luckily it hasn't. Well, what if you have to go in and get the uh, the marinade or something? You it didn't happens. Bring it out. You have to have. You, well, you have to helpers. A spotter. You have to have spotters and helpers. All right. The other main uh, source of fire, I guess, no matter what season, is the clothes dryer. Well, yeah, I know that one. And the lint thing. Now, we have a brand new dryer, and it has that little lint filter that you, a after every load that you've done, you take it out and you clean it out. But then I think that there's other areas where the lint is going deeper in, right? It's still getting into the dryer. That isn't take. That isn't controlling all the lint. No, there's still some that, that'll go in the vent. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where the fire starts, for sure. I mean that stuff is very flammable. So you you definitely want to shine a flashlight back behind your scary dryer because it it really is when when you shine a light back there you're going to be horrified. And a lot of times people will move the dryer back into position after they've had the perception of actually hooking that hose up, mm -hmm. and that hose will come undone. And it, and it pinches, maybe. And or it's, yeah, it pinches, or it's just venting in lint into the house, and you don't even know it. Great. So really take a look at that before you, you tuck that thing back in its place. All right. And also check for, you know, when you're if you have the vent that has the flaps, you know, open the flaps up, shine a light in there, and just see if it's clogged, and make sure that little critters can't get in there either flammable critters with lint coats you know it's, there's nothing worse <laughs> <laughs> well those critters all they need is about the size of a nickel or a penny yeah they get in, in it they get in everything Ick. i all don't right. like them well, when we come back we're going to guide you through what is a virtually um, a safety checklist so that you can walk through your house 
uh, room by room and space by space and see these are some things that maybe you could uh, change to make sure that you don't have a house fire. Let's do it. Uh, in, the uncoming, in the upcoming months, all right? Good. You're listening to Home Wizards, Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, where we're here to help improve your home and improve your life. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and our website, yourhomewizards.com. And we're back in this flash. Don't go away. Well, hi there. Welcome back to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. I'm Eric Stroman. Well, we love to help improve your home and improve your life. And Eric, we are getting you for every holiday a fire extinguisher. I want it. And I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm going to dress it up during Easter, and then I'll, you know, it'll Color be seasonal. It up. Yeah. I, re- I, you know, I don't have one, and I'm, and I need one. And I'm, thank you for reminding. Yeah. Me. Yeah. It's one of those things, and and the kids need to learn how to use the fire extinguisher because it's not only important to have one, but then to practice to know how to use it. And boy, that'll be a lot of fun. I can blow through a couple of them just teaching them. They'll have a great Seriously, time. Seriously. Be fun. Yeah. Go out in the backyard. It's I'm a good, doing it. It's a good, it's a good it. thing to do. Okay, good. We, we took a, a class. In fact, a lot of communities have this where they have earthquake safety or, you know, neighborhood disaster preparedness classes where you can become what they call a first responder. And so my husband and I did this, and it's a, a six week thing where you go. Uh, it's a free class, and you go for you know a Saturday. You could save you. You could save lives. You can save lives, and they and they train you on all the different kinds of disasters, and they they walk you through how to use a fire extinguisher and how do you give CPR. I mean, you know, things that you've learned through the years, but it's sure. a good refresher. Yeah. And how to prepare for earthquakes, and what if the gas lines were broken? How do you help your neighborhood? So anyway, can, so can you do Heimlich maneuver? I can. You know, I've had that happen to me once. Oh my. And the guy that I was with didn't even ignite. He just kind of watched me. And I was waiting for him to do something. He was just kind of looking at me. You're while, kidding. Yeah, he was just kind of looking at me. And, and you're like, come on, you're telling yeah, him to I'm, give it. And I'm like pointing, and he's like, uh-huh. Were you doing the thing where you're holding your hands to your neck? I like think I'm I finally choking. got there. And then, and then ultimately, you know, well, I, I was able to cough the thing out. And I was like, what the, What were you doing? What were you doing? He was just like, I was just seeing if you were really going to go down. <laughs> Do you know what you do when you're by yourself, though? Huh? I mean, I don't know if I'd have the. You guts. throw yourself over a chair or something. Close, to, yeah. Or like if you're at the edge of a counter, you put you like literally ram your rib cage into the in the, the solar plexus there. No, in the uh, diaphragm. Yeah, right. Right there. under the rib. Oh, there we go. Oh, anyway. So let's talk about that's really scary. Let's talk about home fire safety. But here's like some some room by room checklist things that you should do with your family. Sure. This weekend. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right, in the kitchen. Here's a question. Does a grown-up always stay in the kitchen when food is cooking? Well, we already <laughs> answered the, the question. The answer's no. That's okay. All right, we're working on that. <clears throat> Are stovetops and counters clean and uncluttered? I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. Can you define grown-up? Well, we're, we're always kids. We're all kids. All right. It's okay. <laughs> are, are, are the stovetops and counters clean and uncluttered? Today they are because okay. Maria was there. Thank okay. God. Uh, but they should be because that could be fire, you know. Yeah, sure. Uh, are there pot holders within easy reach of the I stove? I do have that, yeah. See, uh-huh. that could be dangerous. Oh, no, sure. Are pot handles turned inward so they can't be bumped? Well, I learned that 14 years ago with the first kid. I never, never, to this day, I rarely cook on the front burners just because of habit. But you have the handles turned And I turn them away in, from uh-huh, it, yeah. See, I, yeah. I, I'm guilty of having them fanning out. So I've got to work on that. Well, that's going to be See? something for you down All the right. road. <laughs> you know, we, you know, you win some, you lose some. How about the curtains? Are there curtains or things that could, you know, be close to your stove and that could catch up on fire? Well, my frilly house coat has a little wispy curtain quality to that it. That lace, that <laughs> lacy <laughs> number, the, the pink and... That's right. Uh, <laughs> is there a kid-free zone of three feet around the stove when grown-ups are cooking, I bet you're going to say no to that. I'll say no, yeah. They're, they're right they're in there, run, They're it? all over the place. They're like Reese's monkeys. <laughs> well, so those okay, are some so things wait, we got to work let me, on. Let me review. So I got to so always be in the kitchen. And the gr- the kid freezes. Yeah, well, that's really important. Three enough. feet. That's it. Three I mean, who's, feet. who's going to be the cop on that? You know, you want I, them to I'll, help you make you the marinara. What? I can sp- I can hit them with a fire extinguisher if they get too close. Or a wet noodle. There you go. Something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not too hot a noodle. It's, no, it's a, no, it's, it's just tepid. a lukewarm noodle. Tepid, tepid yeah. noodle. <laughs> All right, heating safety. Yeah. Are portable space heaters always turned off when adults leave the room? Well, mm, I don't have them. Yeah. But you might. I used to. I grew up in Chicago. We had them all the time. And uh-huh. boy, those things were running 24-7. Or does the fireplace have a sturdy screen to catch sparks? Eh. I have a gas fireplace. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you never know. You might yeah, have no. a wood burning. Uh, has the chimney been inspected and cleaned during the past year? Yes, it has. You know why? Creosote buildup. Toxic. Well, not only that, but it can blow up on you. Catch fires. 
So yes, Good the answer you. is yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Has your chimney See, now been... I'm getting, now I'm getting defensive. See, now it's a competitive thing. <laughs> yeah. Has your furnace been serviced? I'm going to say yes to me. Yay. Hey, By good a professional. For you. <laughs> good I for you. I too, actually. I just had one. Are propane tanks or other fuels stored outside your home? No, ma'am. Where are they stored? I don't have any. Are they stored in the... You have I none. do have gasoline in the truck. See, we have propane, spare propane tanks in the garage. But you don't even have... You don't use propane anymore, no. do you? No, but we have it for our earthquake uh, generator that is fueled by oh, propane. Oh, gosh. I'm coming to you when the big one happens. We're there. We got Monopoly. You do? We, we got. We see. Yep. We figure if you're stressing out, you want some games. We have some booze. We're ready. We, we have all the important do you have things. Pajamas, that, pajamas with pajamas feet. Pajamas and feet. We have yeah. blankies. We got. We got the, all the important all right, things, but then good. also some some fun things okay, too. Um, do you know the fire department's emergency phone numbers? I do not. Not like nine one one, but, but you the know. fire the fire department is only about a block and a half from my house. So I know, but good. everyone's going to be calling them. Well, so they, you better, uh, I, I, you know, right. I I friendly right. up to them. You need to make some cookies and get you know get them on your get their cell phone. All yeah. right, what about electrical? You you know about all this stuff. Sure. Are extension cords used safely? Like not under carpets? Who would do that? No, you can't do that. No, you can't leave them outside either. You got you got to undo them when you're when you're not using them. Mm -hmm. People just let them sit in rain water and stuff. Crazy. Get dangerous, danger. dangerous. Danger will rob us. Um, are electrical cords in good condition without the cracks? Yeah. Yeah. Are kitchen appliances, oh, who does this, such as coffee makers or toasters or microwaves plugged into separate receptacle outlets? Absolutely not. No. I've got, I've, oh, oh. You mean instead of having adapters? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, yeah. nobody does that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, smoke alarms. Do you have smoke alarms all working? I do. I know I have working alarms. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. And does your home have, I guess, one on every level? You have a two-story house. Yeah, did, I do. Okay. It's not like I'm getting married. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Are there batteries working in all the smoke alarms? Debatable. Yes. Most of them. How do you remind yourself that it's time? Well, you know. I hear the beeping. Did, did, yeah. It was a TV show. That, I don't know which one it was. Married with Children, one of the shows, it was very funny, where the battery had, had died. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it was just, dee, 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 and they couldn't figure out where they'd put right. it. I think it was in the attic or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And they had kept searching. It was driving them nuts. And the, all they could hear was almost like this little chirping sound. Yeah. Um, are all the exits of your home clear of toys? No. no. <laughs> Does your family have a home fire escape plan? Have you guys, have you worked out an escape plan? Especially with the up upstairs. You know. How would everyone get down? They all like a climb, little ladder? The boys all, actually all Do you have a rope ladder? Them, no, they all climb on the roof all the time now anyway, just as a play area, which is, it sounds strange, but... Pirates. They're like pirates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Like swashbuckling pirates. <laughs> they are. Then how does poor Willow get she, off? She, you know, I almost wanted to demystify the whole fear of heights, and, and her brothers are up there with her. I don't want her to be afraid, but I don't want her to have too much confidence. But, you know, she's up there anyway with them. So finally, I just went up and taught her how to be up there. And then they know how to jump? Is that what they would do? They, they, can, would just they jump? can already jump from the roof. Okay. All right. Um, and has your family picked a safe place to meet outside after your, your exit from the house? No. Assuming that some, no. No, no I've got to do that. That's a really important thing to do. Yeah. And does your family... That's, all, that's also an interesting idea. You know, you often think of what if an intruder, a home invasion occurred, yeah. what would you do? You know, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a good thing to do, get them out on the roof and then get down and go meet someplace, mm -hmm. if that were to ever happen. Especially if they could fly like those monkeys in The Wizard of Oz. Fly like a birdie. Those scary monkeys. I didn't like, I didn't like <laughs> them. Scary. They scared the heck out of me. Does your family have a home fire escape plan that includes two exits, like a door and a window from each room? No, like but, if you're, but I, you know, my house, I think, could be pretty easy to get out of in the event of a fire. Okay. But I'm going to rehearse this. It's a, you know, I'm glad that you're reminding me. Is, well, me too. I mean, and I'm glad it's it's June Safety Month for yeah, fire. Yeah, so, so go through this. So we'll put it on the website, this home fire safety checklist, and uh, test yourself and see where you might have some room for improvement. Yep. And then... Uh, Check back in a couple of months and see why you might have gotten a little lackadaisical, sure. right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Good test. Well, but yeah, it's fun. So when yeah. we come back, uh, we have some more great things to talk about, uh, like this plant that we have fallen in love with. Man, it's like we're addicts for this Oh, my thing. God. It's called the air plant, and it's known as the it plant. And wait to hear how 
well, how you grow it and how you can design with it. And it's, it's well, you have it in your tree. I love this thing. Wait till we talk about it. You're going to huh? love it, too. All right, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, where we love to help we'll rock your world and improve your home and improve your life. That's right. Uh, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, Home Wizards, and we'll have more fun with you and air plants after this.